NBC Sports fires Roger Maltby, the voice of golf behind Johnny Miller after all these years? What does this mean? It means that Liv should hire Maltby yesterday. Hey, he's, he's been voted the most interesting man in golf a couple times. He may be chronologically 71, but he's still in his prime. Very disappointing. Um, still in his prime. And you know what? The good thing is a couple articles we've been looking at. He's definitely taken the high road here. Um, so, yeah, I hope he lands on his feet. Uh, I, I'd like to see him announcing and not – they've been vaguely mentioning, like, senior tour stuff. But anyway, uh, I want to see him, him announcing. I I fully agree. He uh, is a funny guy. He's got a great rapport with the players. He knows all the players. They all know him. Uh, he spent how many years with Johnny Miller, who is the best uh, at that job? Um, Faraday's got his own gig. They're just different. I would say Faraday and Miller are just very different. But I think Maltby and Faraday have a nice rapport. Very nice rapport. You got to you got to figure you know Faraday's been thinking about this since the minute he heard maybe Roger texted him I, they must have a relationship you would think um, I would love it I would love it and the besides uh, as a fan loving it Dark Star I for Liv if I'm the if I'm the CEO of Liv wow well, if I'm if I'm Greg's henchman chief lieutenant um, it's the sound of golf. Roger Maltby and David Faraday on every live broadcast, it's the sound that I've heard for the last 20 years, 15, 20 years. So it'd be very familiar. Um, it'd be awesome. It would be awesome. What, what do you think of that angle? Yeah, I, I love that angle. I, I think it's a situation where you put those two back together. Once again, you've got live leading golf, leading the changes uh, those changes are in a positive manner, uh, as we've talked about it many times. The rest of golf is being reactive to what Liv is doing. Yeah, having Faraday and Malpy together solidifies their uh, lead in broadcasting. I, I love the new format, uh, you know, no commercials on the Internet. But, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that's going to solidify their game. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's, I, I'm yeah, not a subject for today, but I wonder how hard Liv is studying a pay per view, studying a pay per view model. Um, you know, if it was a couple of bucks, if it weren't meaningful money, I think people would uh, enough people would chime in that might be meaningful. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of the TV advertising revenue model at this point in civilization. It, I just don't think that's a winner. TV is shrinking, shrinking, which is a good segue into the next block here. Why does NBC fire Maltby and Gary Koch, longtime announcers, very good at their jobs, very good at their jobs? Uh, why now? Why and why now? What, uh, what have we been kicking around, Dark Star? Well, first of all, the, the money. They, they need to save the money. They, they're, they've mm -hmm. folded golf, folded golf channel just into their other sports. You know, they've moved their headquarters to Connecticut. Uh, they're struggling. They're restructuring. This is a classic restructuring. Um, uh, I don't is. know how you put it any other way. Yeah. That's exactly the way you would put it. Uh, that's a, that's the business term for it. Yeah, the, Mike McCarley. Let's bring that name in. Mike McCarley. Uh, Mike, it'll be good to hook up with you for a beer at some point in the near future. Uh, pres outgoing, retired, former president of NBC Golf, uh, who had a real team. Mike was president, and he had EVPs, he had VPs, he had you know a team, an executive team working with him and for him. And when he left in March of 2021 uh, to go go for him tomorrow sports with Tiger, um, which is where Mike is now. That's where we've heard that name. We've talked about him before on the tomorrow sports episode and how that's really intended to take over the PGA Tour. Go watch that one. Um, he was not replaced. Uh, best we can tell, and I'm pretty decent at corporate research, um, not replaced. So Mike's gone. There is no new president. Mike's whole team is gone. The EVPs, the VPs, they're all gone. Huge savings in, in payroll. And the, stu and the studio has moved from Orlando and just folded into the Stamford, Connecticut 
NBC Sports Complex, which is, looks, looks like an office building. Go look it up on the web. It's just another nice office building in Stanford, which is a nice office building area. And, you know, Golf Channel is a shell of what it used to be, an absolute shell. They canceled Morning Drive, and that was shot in Orlando. That did not come back into Connecticut. Uh, and now they're getting rid of their on-air personalities at the, on the broadcast level, which Dark Star, if my memory serves me correctly, they NBC just re-upped, what, two years ago under Mike McCarley's leadership, and uh, presumably the head of NBC Sports in general had to sign off on that one. But they bought 10 years' worth of PGA Tour rights in 2020 for mm, I think it was five to seven hundred million dollars and yet they're cost cutting already yeah hmm. th- they're obviously regretting that move um and, and you know let, let's not overlook the fact I mean sadly Arnie's been gone for a few years so it gives them the opportunity to f- to move uh the golf channel up towards their headquarters they can consolidate positions uh, and, and, and obviously, they're looking to somehow consolidate revenue streams. Um, they signed a big contract. As you know, as we've discussed, the broadcast television golf model is dying as we speak. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously, getting back to Roger Malpe, Gary Koch leaving, they're still they're, they're trying desperately to figure out ways to attract that younger audience. Their streaming services have just been a disaster. Nobody's, you know, nobody's going to pay for golf. The coverage is awful. Um, so what do you do? What are they going to do? I, I don't know. That's the scary yeah, they're thing. Not, they're not headed in a good direction. I mean, to put a dot on what you just said, if, if golf viewership for the PGA Tour were growing and expanding even slightly, uh, then why would NBC Sports be firing people and not replacing them? It's not like they got rid of Roger and, and Gary Koch and then replaced them with great new personalities. They're shuffling a little bit in and out. They also got rid of the, uh, the other personality on air, uh, whose name I have somewhere right in here, I think, Catherine Tappan. So yeah. she's out too. So Tappan, who's been a longtime sideline reporter for NBC, you've seen her at Notre Dame games, you've seen her at other college football stuff, and then at golf. She's gone. Uh, so they're trimming payroll in a meaningful way, uh, in a right. very meaningful way. Um, well, let, let and, me throw this at you real quick. Because I, 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 you're losing Malpe, et cetera. In, in my opinion, and, and you do, you've done a lot more corporate work than I have. So in my opinion, you're, in a sense, alienating your base. That's what I always get confused about. The people like you and I at our age that would watch golf... Well, I'm not going to be as interested in NBC's broadcast with with Malpe not there. Well, explain that move to me from a corporate level, because I, I I don't get it. It's already bad coverage, and Roger yeah. was a bright spot. Um, Coke a bright spot. Uh, uh, Mark Rolfing another bright spot. Mark has not been fired, at least not that we've seen yet. Um, I it's a desperate attempt. To, well. Look, when your revenue stream is shrinking and you can't fix it uh, very easily or at all, then it then it's more about protecting your job. So whoever's running golf at, at NBC is, you know, circling the wagons and they got kids in school and they got Christmas presents to go buy. And so cost cutting is, an, is a quick way to at least look like you're doing something like, well, we're saving money. I mean, look at the bottom line is not so bad. Um, but that's no, it's not a long term strategy. Right. It's I was just going to say that's it's a, a short term yeah. Very, approach. very short term. But let's get real. I, I mean, I don't even know who's running the show. We looked. It's, it's very hard to noodle through NBC Sports executive team and find out who is even the general manager of golf. There's got to be one, but there's no president. There's no EVP that we can identify, which says a lot. So they've really shrunk. We'd have to go talk to an actual employee. At right. at uh, in golf and see who hey who do you report to um, and maybe we'll try to do that but it's not a good sign I mean let's leave it there I mean we could probably I could go on and on and on about the details but that would be boring probably to most people so it's uh, you know cost cutting only goes so far unless you have another strategy that you know like you're going to do a merger with somebody else and you're trimming the decks before that happens to make your bottom line look better during that term sheet and, and all that. Um, but it's not. This is not a good situation for NBC Golf. 
um, at all because the product and oh well let's say what's obvious here we've we've glanced past it so far <laughs> so you have all the you have these firings going on we've had this continued cost cutting since uh the beginning of COVID. so the february 2020 march of 2020 they moved the studio folded up mccarley leaves a year later uh more staffing pay more payroll cuts all that stuff that's well before live then live comes along and that really brightens your day if you're at NBC Golf. You're like, oh, Jesus, crammity Christmas. Like, what do I got to yeah. do to get a break here? Now they've lost stars, DJ, et cetera. Um, it's just a Tiger's now injured. That, you know, SOB went and got himself injured. We needed him. From a, from a media point of view, you're angry at Tiger Woods. Angry because he's ruining your ratings to an extent. You're angry at Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeChambeau and Phil Mickelson, these named brands that are now gone from your coverage, and you can't fix it. There's nothing you can do. You're stuck. It's a bologna sandwich. So what do you do? Yeah. Well, yeah. they're all in against Liv, obviously, the, the media now, NBC Sports, um, CBS as well. We see that on the Golf Channel every day played out. They're, they're scrambling. So they need what would the episode hasn't dropped yet. So... What do they need, Dark Star? What does what does NBC and the PGA Tour both need big time out of this live, you know, cataclysm that's been thrown upon them? What do they need? They need a little bit of that dirty money, blood mm -hmm. money. The they blood need money. some clean blood money. They need clean <laughs> Saudi money. They need an infusion of capital. Okay, they need to run and, the money through the rinse cycle. They need the money. Get they it. need the money through the rinse cycle. I'll do it, John, but not because of your little speech, but because I need the money. Hard to believe after all these years, but I, I need the money. Yeah, excuse me, I can't even speak today. Um, you know, before before we get to that, I was gonna so, and and I love your corporate analysis. Because as an outside observer, if, I, if I'm walking into this, I, I'm saying you've you've used the buzzword. We're making a fresh start, okay? But you've gotten rid of your talent, who potentially could go to your competition in one form or another. And another thing, just like the PGA Tour is copying the live model by throwing money and having super events. You just copied CBS's model where they got rid of Gary McCord, who was also fabulous, and their on-air talent. And, you know, I, I, all I see is it's an effort to attract a younger audience that has no interest in golf. So, it, 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 you know, someone's got to explain to me how that's going to work. Well, and NBC and their, you know, well, let me put it this way. Would you want that job? Would you want to go and be general manager of nbc sports golf at this very moment in time can i avoid can i avoid the con <laughs> can i avoid the contract and yeah. then become the manager uh, let me go get a cup of coffee uh you know mr b team and then i'll come back and answer that question and then i never see you again well yeah yeah well i, I actually i would take the job because my job's worse but that's a different that's a whole different that, that story a whole different, that's a whole different year of shows <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole that's that's a millennial away um no, that being said, their long-term contract's a problem. I can see that being restructured in some form because they're going to use some excuses, um, et cetera. I just think, you know, broadcast television is a disaster. What do you think about the rumors that Liv is going to have a broadcast now? So what are you going to do? Do, you, do they hire somebody? And, and I think that's just coming, I'm kind of coming full circle to our initial premise do they hire Malpy right away? Yesterday. 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 Okay. I would do it yesterday. Roger left the door wide open. Um, he he apologized in a manly way to Greg by saying, you know, Greg and I had a little run in years years ago, so I can't imagine he'd be interested in me at all. It was a great way of saying, hey man, no hard feelings. And I Greg Norman is Bigger than that, I, I've read all the baloney and the the, the the press reporting, and and maybe Greg has a you know prickly personality, perhaps I don't know that, but he's above that. You cannot have his level of success in business and be thin skinned to that extent. I mean, right. yeah, you can have some soft areas, sure, 
But if Greg thought Malpy was a good addition to the product, Greg would make that happen. Right. He doesn't have to see Roger every day. If it, but he would. He's bigger than that. Way bigger than that. Bury the hatchet. Move on. Roger's a good guy. Good chance to sneak in Dark Star. How many times did Malpy win on the PGA Tour? I believe five. Five times. Five. Yeah. Five a unique. Time PGA Tour winner. Unique in the sense he won his first two starts. That's that'll probably never really? happen again. Yeah, that'll yeah, probably never cool. happen again. That's a, that's amazing. Back to Greg real quick. Um, Greg has a prickly personality. Greg, but like Does I he? said, having well, okay, you're right. I, it's been reported. However, my my point to this, Malpy may have had a run in with them. That's not an exclusive club, okay. But at least, <laughs> well said. Well said. At least with Greg, you know where you stand. See, I like people like Greg because I'm kind of like that way too. If, if I don't say a lot in in, in multiple person conversation, but when I do, it's ex- I'm not hiding anything. There's nothing veiled. Uh, you know, yeah. you're. Uh, yeah. So I, I like that. Yeah. I like that personality to some degree. You know, you know where they stand. Here's what they what they're going to do, and they actually go out and do it. Greg said, "This is the tour he's going to." present and he did it um Mm -hmm. you got to give him credit for that too i would you know never never be uncomfortable around a man who owns a 50 caliber sniper rifle (laughs) um you know he's he's a straight shooter i agree you like him don't like him fine but he's what you see is what you get right he's not duplicitous it doesn't seem or in any major way and that's refreshing you know I, i it's probably a pleasure to work in a business environment for Greg Norman because you walk in the office and he says, you suck, you blew it, go fix it. And that's what you do. But then you go fix it and he says, good job. Well done. He doesn't look at you and say, oh, that's okay. Thanks very much. Uh, Come back next month with these new things and then fires you the next week without telling you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. You have no idea you're on, you're, you're, you're on thin ice and then they just, the ice cracks and they don't let you know until you're Uh, underwater. As soon as they get, as soon as your boss gives you an impossible goal to hit or a very difficult responsibility to achieve, that you know, you should be looking for a job, because that's how professional managers telegraph that you're going to be fired. They've already fired you in their mind. They just wait a little bit of time because it doesn't look right necessarily to fire everybody all at once. That's a little bit too many feathers to ruffle. So that's how they do it. You know, yes, that's great. Your job is to now go climb Mount Everest in the dead of winter <laughs> and bring back a shrubbery. You know, it's, uh, that's how they do it. Um, and then, well, you missed your goal. So we're going to be, you know, replacing you. So Greg's probably a great guy to work. I, I would think that I get that impression distinctly. And because we value those live checks continuing to come into the show, we don't yeah. want to say anything untoward about the boss. Um, so I, you know, I think Malpy should be hired yesterday. It's interesting to me that, uh, that they could expand their, their TV product in a big way by having that. I think Faraday, I don't think we've said this yet. I don't want to say desperately. That's not the right word, but I think Faraday needs a sidekick in a, in a meaningful way. Um, I think he's better with a sidekick. Aren't we all better with sidekicks? It's better to have a conversation and bounce off, you know, the the stories and jokes and Roger's smart and he knows golf backwards and forwards. Uh, He's a great on the golf course guy. Faraday's in a tower or behind a monitor or wherever he is. Right. The drawback I see right now to the only drawback I see to the live coverage is the fact that Faraday's kind of on his own. He makes a joke. There's no there's no um there's no witty byplay with no. the other two guys. I can't even think who they are. They're uh I don't think they're golfers, are they? I think I, I, they're general they're not, sports guys. They're not big personalities. Let's leave it at that. Um I, I, I can't recall their names. I, no, I think they're as I said a couple English guys. Right. Watching a live broadcast, watching the evolution from London, which was unwatchable, to the uh, tournament at Doral, you know, 100% improvement, massive improvement, uh, was a very entertaining, watchable product. And, you know, you, you, you add a Roger Malpe, and now you really got some. Now you can go in multiple directions. They've, they've learned from the mistakes of broadcast television. They're presenting a product that is um, universally liked by the old and the young. And you know what the great thing about it is that you can watch it any time. That's the greatest thing about the internet. You know, I, I don't have to watch it a Sunday at four in the afternoon or tape it, and then invariably I get a pop up on my phone and I find out who wins anyway. And I'm not going to watch the tournament. So 
Um, that's a good thing. Please stop covering. Don't anybody else cover live. I don't want the pop-ups. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, well, and if they do get a deal with Fox, is the rumor Fox Sports at Live will they continue their the streaming? Mm. The, mm, obviously, Fox would want to have something to say about that. And you know how I feel about uh, keeping the product on streaming and Wait, char- you haven't charging mentioned, a premium. You haven't mentioned things. gambling yet, have you? No, but I, I'm. It's funny you should say that. Thank you for playing. <laughs> um, we're going to do a show soon uh, about uh, the sports books that are being built. So, can I tease that? Is that okay? Can I? Oh, please tease I mean, the PGA thing. Yeah, because by the way, if the live checks ever come, we'll start doing a show or two a week or five. Damn we'll do straight. five a week if the live See, our, checks our ever audience, come. <laughs> our audience is unaware that Dark Star is a is a wagering guru. And we yeah. haven't even unleashed Dark Star's insights into who to bet upon um, for golf, particularly because uh, football has some other American football has some other wrinkles that you have to overcome, like officiating that uh, can <laughs> well, that's go how in different you bet. directions. L- let's tease that. You bet on the officials. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> There's no. Yeah. That's the only way you bet American football. Uh, kind of. There, there is truth to that. But uh, PGA Tour, we're going to do an episode, a whole episode soon. Uh, PGA Tour is building. A sports book, a a golf betting casino building at TPC Scottsdale, where the Phoenix Open is played. It's out in the news. Go look it up. Uh, You'll see pictures, artist renditions, and they've partnered with DraftKings to DraftKings will be the operator. Um, So the PGA is fully now into the golf betting business, and I I would like to be when on my tombstone. I would like it to say, you know. B team always said that live was going to dominate global golf betting with the streaming product. And that's their revenue model and the heck with TV advertising. That's just gravy. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'd like to see it go because the live, the first live sports book is going to be in Macau or Singapore or, or not Hong Kong, Macau next to Hong Kong and uh, Singapore and places like that. And that would be dynamite, absolute dynamite. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to hear I'd like to hear from the audience and their opinion on our or excuse me, guys like Malpe leaving is that alienating the base and is that going to help younger people? Is it gambling? What's going to bring younger people in? I'm just curious because I just I don't see it. I know you're much more into the gambling angle, so I guess the real question is. Is gambling going to bring the young audience? Is getting rid of the old guys going to bring the younger audience? Which is more important? That's what I'd like to know because I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't the know. Old if guys aren't going to bet. It's it's a revenue model to me. I don't particularly care about the gambling for gambling's sake. It's the revenue model. You know, if somebody put me in charge of, if somebody made me chief revenue officer of Live, that'd be fun. Um, I do not want to be chief revenue officer for PGA Tour. Uh, but live would be fun because they're blazing new ground, and I th- because they're well positioned, they don't have any baggage. I can just build a model around gambling globally because I've already staked out my global. And I just have to work on getting a decky on board, getting a couple of Koreans. I, I have just some boxes to fill, but I've already got major. I got Cam. I got a great set of tools here to build my global gambling empire. Then I just need my web guys to build out the streaming product that integrates data shot link all that stuff and i have the world's best digital presentation of the 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 play and it's a shotgun start i've got all my guys out there all my horses are on the track at the same time and it's just it's a cinder it's a it's beautiful i mean it's a beautiful thing and it, it the only question is would it absolutely crush it from a revenue point of view or just do really well i cannot see any failure globally with that model i just can't and do young kids like to gamble you ever heard of robin hood you know do they like to gamble yeah hell yeah who's well dark star as a medical Mm -hmm. professional who is more risk averse a young man an 18 year old or a 65 year old 
I don't know. That's a tough question. But I'm going <laughs> to yeah. go with the 65 year old, just yeah. off with the cuff. The 65 yeah. year old whose wife is yelling at him, and he's got kids <laughs> and grandkids, and he's got you know two mortgages and all that stuff, right? Well, Planning he can't be. Well, by the way, he can't be gambling all the time because half the time he's falling asleep during the coverage. <laughs> Absolutely right. So, 18 year old guys that would be charging machine guns or doing that kind of stupid stuff. That's what 18 year old boys do. They're very risk averse. You know, bulletproof, live forever. That is the very. That's the reason that you cannot rent a car in the United States of America unless you're 25 years old, and everybody knows that. Um, but yeah, that's a little. That's an interesting way to think about it. Yeah, because at 25 you start to become a little less willing to drive at 100 miles an hour through a crowded street. Before that, though, um, so they they would love it. I think it would be a great. It is the. Maybe it fails. Let me. I'll put it. Let me look at it the other way around. Maybe my model fails completely, but it, it is the only avenue available at the moment that has potential to pay off in a big way. Because yeah. no matter what you do, you, you could have four Tiger Woods out there playing on the PGA Tour and live, and there's a, a merged league, and it's all intriguing and all fabulous and all that great stuff. You're not going to, the, the, the TV audience for golf is not going to quadruple. It's just not. It's not yeah. going to happen. The well, kids are playing video games and all that stuff. You need a whole different avenue into younger viewers, boys, and uh, gambling. I can't think of another one. All right. Um, so, and, you know, I'll give you a, a personal note as far as the advertising. The only thing television ads do for me is they make me say I'm not going to buy that product because of that particular <laughs> advertisement. Well, you know? well, we call you Dark Star for a reason. Well, uh, yes. Hey, okay. The other thing is, hey, when you take over there, can you please, on the live broadcast, can you move the pylon all the way to the left so there's not that gap yeah. there? That drives me nuts. The pylon nuts. needs what? a little work. Yeah. The pylon needs pylon. some work. The, so they the need two a little things, bit of tweaking. Um, the, the coverage has gotten great. The pylon needs to be tweaked, and they need to add a personality for Faraday. And they're that's why we it. did the Malpy show, because he's I, a great I hope, guy. But in my dreams, I uh, when I'm up in the middle of the night, I would think, I would hope that Faraday has a has some input to yeah. the product. I mean, he's been around TV long enough. He's had his own show. He's got his own road show. Um, you know, he's turned into an entertainment guy. He knows what he's doing. He didn't start out that way. He's a golfer. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, David, I saw him hire Maltby. Yeah, I saw <laughs> David live. He's very entertaining. Funny guy. What are the, I, uh, did, I, did we already say in the show that Maltby and uh, Faraday, obviously, I, I, they have each other's cell phones. They've texted. They're in touch, no doubt about it. Whether there's a job opportunity or not, who knows? But certainly they've talked. I mean, they were they shared the same broadcast for what at least three, four years, right? I mean, Faraday was on NBC. For hey, I got the, three, forget, four, hey, years. forget this. I got a better idea. You, me, Faraday, Malpy, um, who else can we get? But we, we go to China and get the clean money and start our own broadcast, golf broadcast. <laughs> there you go. Can we base it in Macau? That can we, be... We'll base it in Macau. We'll get the clean Chinese money that the PGA Tour gets. We'll get me, you, Malpy. We'll, we'll, we'll steal Faraday from Liv. Um, who else can we get? Um, oh, Gary. That's what I... That's Gary, uh, Gary McCord. That's who I wanted to say. We get McCord. Oh God! The, the yeah, the five I, of us forget about it. <laughs> Faraday's enough for me. I get Gary. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a Faraday guy. Gary's I good like for the Gary. gambling aspect, right? Yeah, that's probably right. That, there right. is some truth to that. Uh, that there is some truth to that. All right, for uh, for now, B team is out. Contact us at thinkingman.com. Doctor Darkstar is out. That's all for this video. For Dr. Darkstar me, thanks for watching. This is a show about finding logical conclusions, and we appreciate you coming along with us. We'll be adding episodes as fast as we can. There's certainly no shortage of things going on in this world. <laughs>